Thanks for <laughs> taking a step back to two years. Um, my name is Yang. Thank you for uh, inviting me here. I'm representing Dr. Lipson and Dr. Schwartz uh, from Toronto, uh, reporting our two-year outcome data. Uh, next. So uh, I, I think we don't really have to introduce the central tremor very much, but um, it's the most common uh, movement disorder. Um, and the current treatment for it includes medication, uh, Botox injections, and surgical options being, being something available for patients who are medically refractory. Um, so following up, following to the pivotal study that uh, was conducted, multi-centered uh, study, um, this technique was approved by Health Canada and FDA for a central tremor, and uh, we continue to do this at our institution, and I'm here to basically look at um, uh, some of the advantages of uh, a Merck-guided focus ultrasound for central tremor is that it's um, incisionless, and there's no implants necessary, and um, the effect of the lesions are immediate and um, being image guided allows um, um, intraoperative adjustments to be made by the clinician. Uh, a question in our mind is the long-term durability of these lesions. We know that patients have uh, good immediate relief from um, the uh, thalamotomy, but do the clinical effect um, are they durable past uh, one year, which is most of the data have been uh, currently so we looked at consecutive patients that were treated at um, Sunnybrook and Toronto Western Hospital in, in Toronto. And um, um, these patients, uh, we found 37 patients. And um, we recorded basically their CRST and Quest data, um, as well as their SDR and the volume um, by volumetric analysis on post-op day one T2 weighted imaging. So looking at the CRSD, um, basically the dominant tremor score, which is part A and part, um, part B of, this, uh, of the CRSD store, we saw, as we know, an immediate decrease in the tremor score by um, uh, first month, uh, three months. And there appears to be a slow um, loss, a partial loss of tremor effect by 12 months. But it appears that at 24 months, this change is still uh, statistically significant. In breaking down the, um, the proportion of patients that are, have partial improvement or full improvement or no improvement, we find that approximately 33% of patients at two years have, uh, still have pretty good improvement from, um, from the procedure. Uh, we looked at lesion size as well. Um, just anecdotally, we felt that it may be something that might um, impact uh, tremor improvement. So basically graphing their lesion volume on post-op day one and their tremor improvement at one year, we uh, found, uh, we felt that there might be a linear um, relationship there. So we put a bunch of variables that we thought would be clinically relevant to this question in a multivariable linear regression. And we found that both age and lesion volume being statistically significant. Um, SDR here uh, was 0 point, had a p-value 0.07. We um, know that SDR isn't a very good representation of um, uh, between outside of range of SDR values. It's not a very good predict factor of um, how much temperature you can increase with MR guided focus ultrasound. So, what about complications? Uh, we find that a lot of the complications are transient. Um, and at 12 and 24 months, um, essentially, uh, m predominantly majority of the complication we see initially have um, uh, resolved. And there are no complications that are arising late, later in, in, the, um, in the course of follow-up. So in conclusion, um, we found in our cohort that uh, initial tremor improvement does decrease partially uh, at one year, but appears to be maintained at two years. Uh, the limitation, obviously, that you know it's unblinded data collection, and there is a significant drop off in the number of patients between one year and two year. Uh, but overall, we feel that um, it continues to be an attractive option for patients with medically refractory essential tremor and. Um, uh, with the accumulating expertise and um, technical expertise, we're, we're um, um, learning that we can more accurately compare MR guided focus or some with other modalities like DBS. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And this. <laughs> and this presentation is open for questions. So we have time. 
So, um, well, I'm just curious because, um, you know, if you look at this talk and the last talk, right, you, you would be relative to what's been reported for DBS, potentially a little discouraged about the long-term effects of this versus, say, DBS. On the other hand, I think that both talks suggest that we're learning a lot, right? So, in terms of your lesion volume, do you think it's the volume that matters or do you think it's the targeting that matters? So, for example, have you looked at your lesion volume versus experience, right? Are they, are, are, are they um, you know, are you hitting the target better with more experience or is it just the volume actually matters? Um, I think I think it's both. Um, unfortunately, we haven't really dissected that in detail. Um, I think the volume and obviously the location of the volume are um, are both important. Um, so that's that's a great question. I think we we need to look at that in more detail. And uh, any correlation between any persistent adverse effects and volume? Um, yes. Again, I think there is uh, an effect and someone at um, Toronto Western is looking at that data right now. Um, yeah, sorry, I think I don't have the answer. Thank you very much.